The scramble for space, the quest to feed more mouths, lifestyle changes, air and plastic pollution, not to talk of the pursuits of wealth in the belly of the earth. The neglect of today's environment will cost the next generation their very survival if not checked. The earth is under threat and it's not just our forest. Ghana, the land of greenery and gold, numerous mineral resources, once enjoyed a 9.6 million hectare forest cover, equivalent of 42% land area, according to an FAO statistics. And that would soon be wiped out partially due mainly to factors such as human error and growth. Out of this forest area of 6.57 million hectares, 1.27 million is what we we'll consider as closed forest. That is fairly intact forest, pristine and, and good. Um, that's roughly about 20% of the forest area. The remainder, which is about 5.3 million hectares, is open forest. Now, that also is a little techni technical. When we say open forest, it means the forest canopy is between 15% and less than 60%, or up to, up to 59%, or 60%. If the forest canopy or the canopy cover is more than 60 percent, then it's, it's considered a closed forest, which is very good. So in layman's term, we can say of the current area of 6.57 million hectares, 80 percent is in a, a poor to not too good condition, and only about 20 percent is in a very good condition. As of 2020, Ghana's forest cover stood at 6.57 million hectares per Forestry Commission data. With rapid urbanization, the country's big cities such as the capital, Accra, are experiencing expansion and beautification. The influx of people in the cities means a correspondence in infrastructure, housing, industries, communication networks, sewage, water, transportation and power supply to meet the increasing demand. All are a major step to a country's economic development and prosperity, yet also to the detriment of the ecosystem. It is a fact that uh, as we progress in development, as we progress in the, the use of um, natural resources, we do impact on the ecosystems. So we get to a point where uh, you get degradation or disturbances on the ecosystem. That is where restoration then becomes necessary. Whereas oxygen is important to life, the atmosphere is composed of 21% oxygen and 78% nitrogen. Agriculture, transportation, construction and industrialization top the list of emitters of particles into the atmosphere. The particles are the particulate matter and gaseous pollutants. So when this thing goes in, you know human beings have to breathe good air. And if the air that we are breathing is polluted, it tends to affect the life of human beings and even plants. Plants because the particles can block the breathing space called the uh, pores, where the exchange gas is. When it is blocked, it reduces productivity. So when productivity is also reduced, it affects man's living. The various ecosystems have its own um, uniqueness. Uh, what pollutes uh, the water bodies may not necessarily be a pollutant for the atmosphere, and it may not necessarily be a pollutant for the land. but there are integrated um, activities that goes on. So uh, you may have a, a pollutant that may affect the entire uh, ecosystems. I mean, uh, including the water bodies, the terrestrial, and the atmosphere. The total area of 6.57 million hectares covers areas that go way even beyond our forested or our forest reserves or, or protected areas. The total area of protected areas is just um, under 4 million. So you, you see that right away about 2.5 million are areas that are not protected by government or for the Forestry Commission. Um, and this could be people's farms and 
private lands, etc. Um, and anybody who understands the um, geography of this country and, and knows that um, we are mainly an agrarian economy, so we do a lot of agriculture. So agriculture is the number one culprit. We always clear land to make way for uh, cultivation of crops, etc. We also have the problem of indiscriminate uh, harvesting of wood fuel for energy, for cooking, etc. For charcoal production. We also have timber harvesting. Um, and recently, I mean, we've all seen um, gory images of how our land has been destroyed through illegal mining, etc. So there are several factors that lead to uh, forest degradation. According to the Environmental Protection Authority, EPA, the roadside sits on top of the list as the number one polluted space away from sites like the industrial areas, Agbabulushi and Adabraka, all in the capital and above the WHO requirement of 10 micrograms and garnered 70 micrograms. According to a 2017 survey, 28,000 people die annually from lower respiratory diseases in Ghana, while 7 million die annually from respiratory-related diseases, including lung cancer. What we have seen in the, in the city over the years is that along the roadside, the levels are much, much higher than the recommended level. level. So we're going to talk about the particle of uh, sizes of 70 microns. They are much, much higher. And then particles of the size of um, 2.5. The 2.5 range are the tiny particles that you cannot see also with your eye, and then the gases that are coming out. So those particles can easily enter into the respiratory tract, and then when it enters into the bloodstream, it can cause lung cancer cardiovascular diseases, and then the pulmonary. Pulmonary is the main vein that trans transports the blood al uh, around the body. So that's also affected, and it tends to kill a lot of people. Recent, this that we observe from the continuous monitors, is that between the hours of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m., the levels of black carbon, you know, I'm talking about black carbon, very, very, very high in the city. Um, this is coming from the burning of, of uh, ties, lorry ties. We suspect that it's coming from singeing of meats and burning of lorry ties. And uh, this level, and then e waste. Don't limit yourself to capitals. These self same Galamse areas. And um, mining areas like Takwa and all that, particulate matter does get suspended in the air. That is where it's even dangerous. That's where you have all your pneumoconiosis, uh, silicosis, um, uh, terminally, you can have emphysema and all that. Because you have a lot of particulate matter hanging in the air, and I can talk of Takwa, Pristia, and maybe of Boise. So they are paying a huge price. And whilst I admit, let me also add that we always think about environment and we look at the optics. But the medical causes are hidden. When fishermen complain of low catch or haul in a net more full of plastics than fish, fat in no way will constitute a balanced diet at the dinner table because the indiscriminate disposal of waste, especially plastics, has negatively impacted marine life. It is estimated that fish provides 20% animal protein to about 3 billion people worldwide. It could be argued that the country hasn't performed too well in the plastic waste menace. It's an eyesore. I thought it was an urban phenomenon. But I know that, in fact, when you go to rural settings, the plastic pollution is a very serious matter. We are coming out with uh, not exactly new policies. The policy direction is clear, 
by programs that will address these issues. We have a national plastic policy, and then also we believe that we must attack them from even the entry point, those that deal in plastics, the commercial entities. And then also, of course, those that use plastics as an intermediary products and even the end users too. At the height of Ghana's deforestation is agriculture, illegal logging and illegal mining, Kalamse, eating deep into the country's remaining 1.7 million hectares of closed forests. This is an aerial view of one such forest in the eastern region. The greens giving way to dusty patches, all in the blind rush, prospecting for gold. There's a drastic reduction in soil nutrients or quality in some of these areas. If you ask me about forest loss, um, we don't seem to have that as a problem, but forest degradation, a loss in quality. Is it true that Ghana's forests could completely disappear in 25 years with the current rate of deforestation? I joined the Forestry Commission about 27, 28 years ago. And long before then, uh, there have been such predictions that 20 years, 25 years, and we still have our forest, 27, 28 years down the line. Um, I would say that unless something catastrophic happens, maybe an act of God, uh, I do not see that happening. When residents of Himan in the Fantiakwa South District of the Eastern Region have no alternative than to resort more to the use of sachet water for domestic purposes other than the natural river the area is endowed with, according to reports, then there is cause to worry. Ghana is at war with herself simply because the actions and inactions of some citizens have rendered major water bodies unwholesome or contaminated due to Galamse. The major fear is the chemical pollution. It's a kind of issue that keeps any serious forester awake at night. You know, because for the simple reason that if there's an illegal farm in the forest reserve, if there's illegal logging, we are quite conversant with how to get the forest back to life. But you're dealing with a situation where topsoil is being taken, subsoil subsoil is being removed. Virtually everything is being taken and thrown around. And as a director of operations for plantations, it is my duty to see to the rehabilitation and restoration of these areas. And it's tough. The question I ask myself is, even if we are able to arrest all these people and seize all the gold and sell, will it be able to pay for the reclamation? No, it cannot. I think that, that's, that's all I can say. It, it's, it's really bad and it's, I think, the n number one threat to the survival of our forests uh, in, in this country now. But the objective is clear. The water should not be polluted and we should save f some forests for later use. As a former Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, the paradox I know is that all our forests are sitting on gold. Oh, and so we have to come to a determination as how to use it. And if the technology cannot allow us to do now, we have to stop them somehow. The next generation have to do it. In times past, Ghana prided herself with six wetlands or Ramsia sites, three in Greater Accra, one each in the Central, Ashanti and Volta regions. The Sakumo Lagoon, is one of such Ramsia sites in the capital. This is how the location designated for migratory animal life, especially birds, has been reduced to. Wetland ecosystems in Ghana constitute about 10% of the country's total land surface. The 2021 World Environment Day is anchored on the theme, Ecosystem Restoration. With the world reported to have lost 3.3 million hectares of the total forest reserve, between 2010 and 2015, 
a reduction in productivity in 23% of the global terrestrial area due to land degradation, an estimated 30 to 35 times historical rate loss in arable land, and of the 8,300 animal breeds known, 8% are extinct and 22% are at risk of extinction. The call for global recovery is now. It is a rallying call to restore, revive, and protect ecosystems all around the world for the benefit of people and nature. The theme for World Environment Day 2021 reminds us that we need to maintain the health of our ecosystems in order to sustain and improve people's lives while reducing the long-term impact of environmental destruction and climate change. As a UN Development Agency, UNDP has been working with the government and the people of Ghana to promote nature-based solutions and climate action. According to the Geneva Environment Network, ecosystem restoration is assisting in the recovery of ecosystems that have been degraded or destroyed, as well as conserving the ecosystems that are still intact. But how does the country intend to chart its recovery path? The issue of forest degradation and, and um, forest loss has been very well in our sight. And um, in 2016, the Forestry Commission, in collaboration with stakeholders and the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, launched this document, which we call the Ghana Forest Plantation Strategy. This is a 25-year strategy which is serving as a blueprint for forest landscape restoration. And um, there are three pillars that support this um, strategy. One is forest plantations. Um, so we're looking at both public and private sector involvement, how to promote private sector involvement and public sector investment in establishing large areas of forest artificially. Number two is also looking at enrichment planting which is the way to um, quickly enhance the capacity of the forest um, to, um, as, as it said, um, become productive again. So you don't clear an area, but actually you go into these degraded areas, most of these open forests I'm talking about, and then we, we, we cut strips through the forest and plant native species and, and manage them over time fast-growing native species, high-value native species. So that's, a, as, that's as opposed to actually clearing an area which has no trees and, and establishing a plantation. In this case, you don't actually cut any tree. You, you, you cut strips about a meter, two meters wide, and then you plant native species and you maintain them until they grow up above the um, shrub canopy. Then the third part, a greater portion of our land is under agriculture. Now, as much as we need to feed ourselves and eat for, uh, create and, and also I mean, grow food for a growing population, um, there are ways to do it in a more conservative and sustainable way. So we're also promoting the incorporation of trees within these farming systems. Currently, we are implementing a wood tracking system in the country, which will ensure that all timber products uh, certified to have come from a legal source, uh, be they um, meant for export or for domestic use. Um, we're also pushing for a policy to ensure that all government projects acquire timber from licensed legal sources. So the Green Canal project or the Green Canal initiative, as I prefer to call it, um, sits very well uh, within the Ghana Forest Plantation Strategy, which is also a drive to restore our degraded um, landscapes. But the, 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 the slight difference is that whereas our previous attempts have been based mainly within the forest reserves and um, farmlands where very few people see, this one is actually, as, as they say, in your face. Okay. Because we're looking at communities, we're looking at cities, we're looking at towns. How do we green our communities? And 
It's also in line with one of the SDGs that look at um, sustainable cities, etc. Some environmentalists say Ghana is one step towards solving her deforestation challenge by identifying and tackling the drivers of forest laws. Ghana has chosen uniting to save the environment as a sub theme for the 2021 World Environment Day event. So it's a combination of activities uh, aimed primarily and deliberately so planned to bring back the natural um, uh, environment, both the bio and then the physical, to its original state. So basically, the Environmental Protection Agency being the umbrella body that oversees the compliance of environmental regulations, enforcement and all other things, we have key role to play. Enhancing air quality must come with some drastic measures. In that case, you have to ensure that if the emissions that come from that stack doesn't meet our limits, then you have to put in place either a preventive, a minimization or a control measure. A preventive is changing the type of fuel you use. For example, if you are using residual fuel oil and you change to use uh, LPG, there's a likelihood that the emissions will significantly reduce. And so maybe you might meet our limit without any pollution control system. So that is a preventive intervention. If you don't have a preventive intervention, can you put in systems that will allow the fuel that you use to reduce? So if you're able to reduce the fuel you use, automatically the emissions is dependent on the, the fuel. And so that would reduce. If that doesn't work, then the mitigation part is where you install a pollution control system. So that is for industry. Very soon we are engaging all the DVLA testing centers to see whether they have all the equipment required to be able to measure emissions from petrol and diesel vehicles. Which means that very soon, when you go and renew your roadworthy certificates, you would have to do an emissions test. And if you fail the emissions test, you might not be able to drive your vehicle until you put in the measures to meet it. The other thing we have realized is there's a lot of burning. People burn in their homes, we burn, uh, commercial, we backyard, we burn plastics, we burn uh, at dump sites. We believe that people should stop burning. Stop burning plastic especially because it, we are not re really sure the type of emissions that come out of it. So people should stop burning and stop burning also at the dump sites. The fact that Accra is experiencing an erratic rainfall pattern this year raises climate change concerns. Ghana has submitted 31 programs to the UN as her environmental commitments to reduce global warming. These programs are in the energy, agriculture, and land use sector, forestry, waste, and city uh, resilience. Enhancing people's livelihoods counteract climate change and stop the collapse of biodiversity are at the hearts of the United Nations. Hence, declaring 2021 to 2030 as the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. It is to, among other things, to build a strong, broad-based global movement to ramp up restoration, avoid a climate change catastrophe and put the world on track for a sustainable future. I invite you all to take action and make smarter choices and invest in restoring ecosystem. Be part of our generation restoration movement. Let's give life to our ecosystems. The clock ticks for the world to meet the 2030 set targets of Sustainable Development Goals SDGs with the firm conviction that action in one area will affect outcomes in others and that development must balance social, economic and environmental sustainability. As the world races to pick up the pace and put greater efforts in finding better solutions to pollution, climate change and biodiversity laws, so must authorities in Ghana be resolute in delivering on the promise and agenda of a better Ghana.